All right. Welcome back to Amari Music Talk, the music podcast. All right. Today I have with me Mr. Ricky Wyatt, bass player, comic book writer, artist extraordinaire. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> got a little Nick Fury in there. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, secret invasion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> secret invasion plug. Oh uh, well, we we're not gonna talk about that this episode. Um. <laughs> okay. I was just gonna say, you know, some great acting in it, some great performances, but could have been more. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been more. Okay. But today, we'll get into comic books another day, but today mm -hmm. we're going to talk about a classic, the Tony, 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 Sons of Soul from 1993. <laughs> some, some, some have called it, in many write-ups and things I see, the, the, it is the precursor mm. to Neo Soul. Okay. Yep. I <laughs> true. <laughs> true. I have, I have seen that. They said this album is the precursor to and no argument for me on that. Hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna explore this C D. Um, I know for me, I know when you brought this up, I hadn't heard it in a long time. Okay. Um, maybe about a I want to say maybe about a year, two years mm -hmm. since I last heard it. Um, but Played it last week. Okay. And it just brought back so many memories. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, every Good year. Huh? Good, Good ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for about three or four years, um, I would go visit my aunt and uncle in you know, Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And it would always be like right around the time of the Minneapolis Black Music Expo. Okay. That I would go. Um, but the year that this came out, I bought this, well, actually on cassette. Bought it the day before I left to go to Minneapolis. And maybe like a week or two before that, I had the Poetic Justice soundtrack, which oh. has the track <laughs> <laughs> Waiting yeah. on You. <laughs> we'll yeah. get into that one a little later, too. So yeah. you know, but going up Highway 70, going up Highway 35, taking that trip to Minneapolis, this was on heavy rotation. Heavy and uh -huh. Okay. You know, and this was, you know, like you were talking about earlier, you know, hip hop had firmly planted its flag into the mainstream, not just, yeah. you know, pop, but R&B as well. You know, its influence was heavy. Mm -hmm. um, you might have had maybe like In Vogue or maybe, you know, Tony Braxton or something like that, mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, just straight R&B. But, you know, there were no more bands left except what maybe low-key, mint condition. But before they started really blowing up, yeah. these guys yeah. took it to the next level. Yeah. In yeah. fact, in fact, we're going to go one album back to the revival. Revival. <laughs> Cause I, yeah. Because I think that, to me, that's kind of the blueprint for this, the, the template for this album. Yeah. Because they had broken away from um, Foster McElroy, who did the first one, mm -hmm. their first album. Yep. And with the revival, especially the, um, you know, the big hit, the blues, you know, that kind of brought mm -hmm. back that old mm -hmm. Jackson 5, like, dancing machine era sound. And, yeah. Well, you know. They, they uh, okay, not to cut you off, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I, I was just going to say... Um, uh, you know, like, you know, Tony, Tony, Tony coming into the game. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned, you know, like there weren't a lot of bands anymore. They, they kind of picked up where like Ready for the World had kind of yes. fallen off. Right. And so, um, yeah, you're right. I know the Revival album, um, because, you know, you know, I think most people would say like Little Walter would say the big hit off of the first one. I would say Baby Doll and Born. Yeah, but, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, I like yeah, I like those two better. Yeah, yeah, actually. And and then when the blues came out, like that was spring summer '90. 
you know, mm. like, it sounded so different from what was uh, getting rotation, right? At, at that time, and 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 so, um, you know, and they were <laughs> they were unjustly labeled a New Jack Swing band, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, or or like a New Jack Swing act, or they were you know lumped into that. Yeah, it's a new Jack Swing group. You know what I'm saying? That's why I think the Ice Cube sample is used on uh, "If I Had No Loot." <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, but but yeah, but yeah, you're right because you know, I mean, Revival was big because they had, uh, you know, like it, it, uh, you know, like it never rained. It's, it's, was right. a huge hit, and mm -hmm. it, whatever you want was a huge, yes. you know, and they were they were. Um, you know, I kind of remember from you know from that album they were headlining the Bud Superfest. Okay. Oh, you know, like the Bud Superfest tour they used to go around. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and they were at that, and um, you know, like when I saw them with the first album, they were on a tour. Like, believe it or not, it was like it was NWA, Guy, Kid and Play, Tom uh, Loke, them, and then okay. the day. You know, so so. <laughs> So they were lumped into that, and then they went to the next level. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I know with this one, um, there were some things in, say, between, like you said, that kind of led up, because, like, Revival was big. And then, mm -hmm. like, the next summer, like, 91, um, you know, with Boys in the Hood, they had yeah. Me You, which was, like, monstrous. Ooh, yeah. Like, you know, it wasn't even a single, and people was like... <laughs> oh, yeah. It uh, when the people love quiet storm, yeah, constant rotation. And then yeah. that fall, they um uh the house party too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot the about song, it. Like I don't know what you came to do, right? Know? And they're in the movie, you know, because they're in the movie. I think performing. Yep. You know? and, and then like Raphael wrote a, I think he wrote a song for Ralph. Yeah, he did. He wrote a song for Ralph for that. And so, okay, those things. You know, led into this being like what it is. Mm. Sitting yeah. into the yeah, sounds of soul, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, is yeah, just remembering just riding up and down the highway listening to this. Um, because you know no, you had to. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say yeah, because you had the single. Uh, if I had no loot, mm -hmm. which you know was kind of in a way, it was kind of like revival part two. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it <laughs> but it stands on its own. You yeah. know, it's not like you know, yeah. it's it's not like they were following the formula at that point. It was just like they had some elements, but they took it to another level with that. Man, man, uh, you know what's funny is I say remember when it world premiered. I guess it was MTV or just you know, some, you know, mm. that was like world premieres were things at that time. And it might have been BET, but I just remember seeing it. Mm. And I remember um, it's like you hear the song, and then like you're getting a lot with the visual. Okay. All right, because they're in a garage and a rehearsal, which I know you can relate to being said musician. Yeah. <laughs> but they have on seventies clothes, <laughs> <laughs> and then but in. It's like in a video, it's like in today's time, so that, you know, like when the mm. riot, King riots and things, you know, were still on people's mind, you know, the verdict. Right. So, like, there's a part of the video where they, you know, like somebody breaks out a camcorder and they're recording the, the, uh. and then the song has like this, um, it's like the guitar part. <laughs> it sounds kind of country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. But it works, and then it's like you hear this, you know, like Ice Cube sample, and you can do Jack Swing. <laughs> you can do the swing, <laughs> you know. And then it's like, yeah, like it, you know. Mm. I mean, even you know, like without the visual, it's like when you close your eyes, you're like, man, all that works. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, I mean, it all works, and um, you know, of course, it's them playing live instruments, so that's you know a thing. Again, it's like, wow, like, mm. you know, like yeah, like. I mean, because it wasn't what was heavy in say rotation at right, you know, like at that time. Um, 
But yeah, but let me ask you this because you said that you hadn't heard it in like in like a while. When you put it on again this time recently, and that song came mm -hmm. on, like what did you like? Did you get the same feeling you got like like the first time saying you heard it? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's one of my practice tunes. <laughs> Yeah. And one of these days I do it like on a gig. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so we, had to, we had to put something together and we'll yeah, add that to the set list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So so let me tell you, so like as you were okay, so let me ask you this, uh, because you 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 said you hadn't played it in um say a while. Um was your reaction the same? Like looking back, you know, when you reheard it like this time, you know, when you get to like like I know like the second song, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cause, yeah, because okay. what goes around comes around is probably yeah, I would say if not my favorite song on the whole album, is mm -hmm. definitely one of the, you know, top four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, like I said, you know, just having that, you know, just riding and just having, you know, that open mind, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, cool. You know, I've heard the single, and cool, they've made that the first track on the album. It's like, yeah. well, cool. Now, what's the rest of this going to sound like? Yeah. And I think with just that track alone, to me, I was like, oh, okay. So they went a step above anything that they did on revival. Yeah. Yeah. With that, like, okay, cool. This is going to be the next level album. And then hopefully, you know, the next album after that is next level. Yeah. You know, they, this was a group that was like, okay, we're here to stay. It was definitely, I mean, so, you know, um, I will say this because we talked about it kind of off air so before we came in. Mm. If, man, you think about it um, in like a... Uh, maybe close to a year span you had mm. like low key come out right which was a self-contained unit you know doing their own thing and then mm. you had mint come uh you had you know tony's come out right i know that's summer because low key was like late 92 like october of 92 right you know tony's was uh june july and then later in 93 and like october was meant, yeah. So, you know, like R and B music band wise, in like in like a year span. I mean, it was looking real good. It was real right. Good. Okay, some real yeah. said releases came out. Oh yeah. And, um, you know, I I I just remember. Um, I mean, like you, yeah. We heard the first single. Great. It was like the first song. Mm -hmm. I think when I first got it, I might have skipped it because I knew that song. I, you know, right? You know, like I wanted to dive like into it. And I remember thinking, like, oh, okay, like you know, I mean, you know, I was probably just so geeked and happy to hear live instruments. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and hitting this hard. Yeah. On yeah. Top of it, you know? Yeah. I was like, that. Yeah, like that. That cranks. You know, yes. that's, that's that's you know. Um, I mean, again, man, because track listing is everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's not like if I had no loop was like a sleeper tune. It, you know, it started out at, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like an eight or a nine. Right. <laughs> so, so it was like, oh, okay, well, you got to come behind this. Right. <laughs> and then, that, like you said, that second track. Do, ta, do, 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 ta, do, do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and I'm, I, I mean, you know, because. I mean, to give people some context, you know, mm -hmm. I was, it was refreshing because R&B at that time was, was kind of, um, <laughs> it, it, it was, you know, like the only person kind of using, you know, like live instruments and bragging about it was Prince. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Cause he, yeah, he got rid of the drum machines at that yeah, point. So, yeah. He was so like a lot of cats were you well, I mean like a lot of acts. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, first of all, there weren't a lot of bands. So 
you know, like you either had like self-contained units or you had like, you know, groups like After Seven or like the Bird or whatever. And so you knew that Vocal, it yeah. was kind of like production. It was kind of like producer based. Then it was drum machines and say what have you. So, right. you know, with the Tony's by this point, you knew, okay, he sings, he plays drums, he plays guitar. Right. They got these other guys who were who were really in the band. I know we now know. Shout yeah. out to them and Elijah, uh, Tron. Uh, um, oh, I can't think of the brother's name. Uh, was it, uh, oh. Look, not Carl. Carl was one of the main. Carl guys. and yeah. uh, Jubu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, man. Shout out to uh, the 3T OKB, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, I mean, so, you know, you know, like there were visuals like, so like, so like, even if you didn't know it was a drum machine, you know, like whether they use a drum machine or not, you think, well, okay, dude plays drums, so he's playing this. Right. So, so like it never kind of, you know, ventured into my mind, man, like that's a drum machine. <laughs> no. <he's> no. <laughs> so, so like, you know, like when I heard the instruments, I just was like, okay, yeah, the band's playing. Right. I mean, so, you know, it was just like, okay, bet. You know, like, you read the credits and the stuff, he's like, oh, okay, he's playing, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're just like, bet, so it's live. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so, like, that, you know, like, that to me was, 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 you know, man, the biggest thing, like, so refreshing, mm -hmm. as said at that time. Was yeah. Like, that, you know, it, it, you know, like, you know, it, it, it hit me with some brothers playing live. And mm -hmm. I, I was through the moon with that, so. Yeah. And again, you know, the fact that to me, you did have low key, you know, that were, you know, they were funky in their own right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't think radio was willing to give that side of them any, you know, like exposure. Yeah. You know, because I think like the big single was a ballad. It was. And then with Mint Condition, it was the same thing. Of course, I would say the downside to that first Mint Condition album was it might have been like a year or two too late in it getting released. Because mm. you had a lot of the, like a lot of the fast songs, you know, they still kind of had that like old Minneapolis kind of flavor to it. And oh, yeah. yeah, and here, you know, we're like knee deep in the New Jack Swing and then knee deep in the hip hop. So the only thing I think that really helped them in the long run was the ballad. Yeah. You know oh, that. Yeah. 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 Part. yeah. Yeah. And then I think yeah. they understood that too. So when they dropped that second album, then their lead off single was a ballad. An up tempo. Tune. Also, right. No, you know what? It, it um it's it actually an up tempo tune. <laughs> <Huh? laughs> Which it, uh, uh, you know, this, it was uh like no one had Okay, nobody does it better. Oh, okay. You know, I'm thinking the one that um, was it the second single then. Uh, Swinging. Mm -hmm. You can send me some. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, because I say remember that because I was like, oh man, men's back out. I remember I seen a video <laughs> on, on like Video Soul or something. But yeah, but yeah, man. Like, I, I mean, you know, um, I I will say this: being a fan, because mm. I. I mean, you know, like I had jumped on the Tony, uh, and the Tony's, uh, you know, you know, bandwagon and mm -hmm. train support, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, whatever you want to say, like the first album. Mm -hmm. So, so like I knew, I mean, they were a unit, you know. Yeah. I, you know, like I saw them live that first album, so I okay, knew they could do live. So to watch their like progression, you know, like through like revival, yeah, and soundtracks and stuff. You know, like when this was coming out, I was like, bet. I mean, so, you know, I, I mean, you know, I kind of knew, you know, what was coming. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'll be honest with you, off this, off of what they did for me and you, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, um, this has got to be, you, you know, different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, being like Raphael wrote that track for Ralph Tresvan, I know for House Party 2, and then they did a song for House Party 2. I, you know, I was going to get it if, you know, like if it didn't get reviewed well, you know, I mean, yeah. it's just like, it's like, hey, like, you know, like I'm going to check it out because, you know, I I was curious to see like mm. what they were, you know, like what they had kind of um, progressed to. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, two tracks in, 
I was like, all right, cool. But yeah. the third one, let me tell you. <laughs> this third one, oh, man. This third one, this third one, this third one. My ex-girlfriend, let me tell you something. First of all, that's like another one of my practice tunes. Uh, okay. Dad <laughs> joint. I was like, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I know some ladies probably didn't like it, but boy, that joint, Man. <laughs> that joint cranks. Oh, it, and what was, um, I was listening to it last week. I was actually, again, in the car, but this time mm -hmm. listening to it from streaming. Oh, okay. And I guess with the, the lossless audio, there's like an extra rhythm guitar part in that that I never heard, you know, whether it was on cassette hmm. or CD. Now, like you say, I, the song is already, you know, a banger. Mm -hmm. But it's just listening to it on streaming and that extra rhythm guitar part comes in. It's like, oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I guess with their, their, um, their influences mm -hmm. too, you know, they, you know, they like Prince, you know, would on record, you know, you see what the influences are right away. And what I found interesting about this track was like, you know, what if, <laughs> say, what if the Jackson five never left Motown or oh. say like if the Jackson <laughs> five were coming out in 93. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine imagine them doing this one? Because it's it's a lot of that sort of Michael yeah. Germain trade-off. Man, so you know, you know what? You, I think you're the first person I've ever heard make that reference uh -huh. <laughs> in this particular song. And um that's like, you know what, that's kind of spot on because mm. you know they would have been influenced by them. Yeah. And, well, and, yeah. And, and and so you're right. So I think, you know, the thing that sets this album apart from, say, the first two, I mean, it says in the title, Sons of Soul. So, right. So, like, you hear on this album more than any, it's like their influences. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, like, I mean, like, you hear it in like the vocal arrangements, you hear it in, say, the musical arrangements. Right. You know, the instrumental say arrangement. So so yeah, like that's that's you know, I never thought about that before. But yeah, you're right. Like say, I mean, a vocal trade-off is kind of like reminiscent of some Mike, you know, Mike Jermaine type stuff. Yeah. That's, that's, and well, it goes back to the uh the blues. Like I said, that's a, you know, they pinch a lot of, you know, dance it's like dancing machine slowed down <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay. 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 You know, because you got the like is you know because you got the little background harmonies, kind of like you know what the Jacksons were doing on that track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, hey man, say you know shout out man to that because um, you know, you know the you know they they get oh they being a Jackson, I mean Jackson five Jacksons, they get overlooked for their contribution to you know R and B music. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, all too often people will only just focus on, oh, yeah, well, Mike. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, like, people will go from, like, you know, it's like, I want you back to, like, off the wall. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> ton of stuff in between. And uh, that was like, you know, like, that influenced a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, uh, and, 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 I mean, so, you know, like, because in, in like, their teen years, you know, there were like Earth, Wind, and Fire, and you know, Tower of Power, right. and like the Ohio Players and Parliament all out. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like people think that they weren't doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like good stuff and say they were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just that, you know, it was, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, I know some people thought it was bubblegum, but that doesn't mean that people weren't listening. And digging it, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just that they were digging this other stuff too, <laughs> mm. you know. And so, like, it just went dominating, you know, like maybe the previous stuff had. But yeah, man. But shout out to that because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they influenced a lot. But you know, like, you just don't hear people kind of, you know, like point that out or kind of an acknowledgement. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, man. I'm glad you did it because yeah, you're right. Mm. I mean, I think about it, it's like yeah, it is kind of like. 
you know, trade off thing. It know? is. I think, you know, listening to it uh, just recently, um, it was, like I said, I, the Jackson 5 influences to me were always there, even when I started listening to it back in 93. Okay. But what I found really interesting, the difference between, say, um, Ex-Girlfriend, Tell Me Mama, those two songs, mm -hmm. the difference was that they were kind of borrowing from like, yeah, some of the kind of earlier Jackson 5 mm -hmm. stuff, you know, where, you know, the blues, like I said, to me, is Dancing Machine slowed down. You know, which, which is a good thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, so, you know, it's funny. I I didn't, I mean, tell me mama didn't grab me right away, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until January, maybe January, February, like 94, mm -hmm. they were opening up for Janet on her tour. Okay. And that was their song opener was like, tell me mama. And I was like, oh, oh. okay. <laughs> Like, yeah, I I I get it. Now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I yeah. I receive, I am a believer in this song now. It was just like, you know, uh, like that that was like, I mean, because you know, some songs do that, I mean, on albums. Yeah, there's kind of yes, that I kind mean, of delay. Yeah. And then you and then you hear it live and you're like, I have a whole new appreciation for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that was one of those songs because I was like, you know, like when they did it, I was like, they opened with this. I was like, I <laughs> but you know what? I mean, you know, when I listen to it, yeah, it gets lost in the shuffle of you know some of the more popular cuts on the album. But you know, I know I kind of just find myself again, kind of going back to mm -hmm. that. You know, um, I think it's sort of like the just the musical arrangement. So, oh, see, so let me ask you this, man. Like, like do you think, because um, I think um, Dwayne and Raphael go back and forth on Tell Me Mama, right? Right. Okay. And then they do, and then, and then like leaving is just Raphael, I think. Right. And then Slow Wine is Dwayne. Right. Okay. So I, I think, what'd you think of Slow Wine? I know, I know when you heard it. I'm, you know, I like it, but then you got Lay Your Head on My Pillow, which follows that. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that one better. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, you know, I don't dislike Slow Wine. Um, to me, it's, you know, you kind of imagine them with this one and even some of the damn hall stuff that's on uh, What Goes Around Comes Around. Yeah. You know, somewhere, I guess, in between the tours and putting together this album, I guess they took a trip down to the Bahamas. Oh, yeah. Trinidad. And, they went to Trinidad. Yeah, Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. could tell, yeah, the influence was there, you yeah. know, which is, you know, I, which is what bands should do, you know, yeah. take a break <laughs> and write. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you, I mean, it's funny because you, you're, you're right. Like, um, I like remember, I just remember people or like radio stations, you know, before mm. it was a single, um, jumping on Lay Your Head on My Pillow. Yeah. You know, and it was, it was like, wow, like, okay. I, I mean, you know, because even like when I first got it, played it, I think I remember riding home like one night then mm. and hearing it on like The Quiet Storm. And this right. is when DJs didn't have to play the same 10 songs yeah you know, right like this stuff, you know you know like you i mean so you know like you could play a you know i mean a track off a new album and not it not be a single or you know what i'm saying anything right like and so i remember people you know you know kind of vibing off that like yo that was track is that and i remember hearing that in conversations i was like wow yeah you know like that's okay interesting you know and you know, like, to slow wines, man, defense, you know, like, no knock against Dwayne and none of that. You know, maybe had mm -hmm. it in, like, like, a different place in the track listing, you know, you know, might have been appreciated more. But, yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, you hear, you're like, yo, that's not a bad tune. And then you hear, yeah. it, <laughs> like, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah, you're like, ah, I like the <laughs> Plus that vamp at the end, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. Know? You know what I'm saying is like you know yeah so. yeah yeah now 
as dope as I think Lay Your Head is, uh -huh. my favorite track of theirs in their whole catalog is number eight. And yeah. I gotta keep it to myself. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's that's their can't help me off okay, off, you know, like off, you know, off off, off the, the this off is the wall. This, yeah, like this is their can't help it. I know what it sounds like. This, you know, man, this to myself. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's first of all, man, the intro. Do, you know what it yeah right. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. Couldn't I, keep I, it. Do, you know what this this song has so much of everything. Like the opener, like you said, that little do 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 do. That made that reminded me so much of Madhouse. Like if Madhouse had you know singers, okay. yeah, <laughs> this would be a track that they would do. And then you've got like the trumpet, which is kind of, you know, because they're from Oakland, you know, mm -hmm. it's got that slide in the family stone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a riot going on. Okay. Uh, with the trumpet. <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 And then okay. you kind of have, you do kind of have some of that, the rest of the arrangement kind of got some of that tower power. Okay. There a little bit. Yeah. Man, it, it, um, I don't know how they recorded it. You know, like, I'd love to hear some backstory on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Guys, if you're out there, <laughs> yeah. you know, I hope they do it on, on say, the tour. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, yeah. they can't do every tune. You know what I'm saying? But if they could do this one, that would be yeah. great. Um, <laughs> because this, this, this is just one of those, um, you know, I mean, I mean, again, it's one of those can't help it type tunes where it's just like, ooh, it's yeah. like you see unicorns. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it's just like, ooh, like, ooh. And like, this is, I mean, you know, I very, I, I don't think I've ever heard a band cover this joint. Nah. Like, dope it is. And not because it's hard, you know what I'm saying? But it's just that dope where, I mean, you know, even, it you know, like, I know the vocal arrangements, you know, the instrumental arrangements. Because even mm. as the song fades out and you turn it up, you're here, you're like, mm. oh, people. you know, it was just, it's, 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 man, just one of them. <laughs> it's man, just one of them tunes. And I always laugh because like when I listen into the lyrics and it's like, I couldn't keep it to myself. <laughs> and it's, 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 hey girl, look, you so bomb. I gotta tell somebody. <laughs> Tell my corn, but down the street. Yeah, like, hey, like, hey, 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 I'm sorry. I know you ain't want us to go, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I gotta tell somebody. Like, hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, and I mean, is, is, if, if I don't play any other tune off this album, mm. I, I play this one. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I definitely play this one, man. And, um, I mean, so you know, I I I I just thought it was a great testament to um, I mean, again, um, you know, like growth and Raphael songwriting, you know what I'm saying? Right. And and uh, things like that. And and say, so, you know, so I know that um, you know, per the um, you know, royalty say no loyalty. Do you, you know the documentary? The documentary, yeah. You know, um, <laughs> that you know, like it might have been some help, you know, man, from another band, maybe like Jubal or Carl or somebody. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but you know, and then, and if they did help, cool. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. thumbs up. But I, I, you know, you can definitely hear the growth just in that song. Yeah. If you put that up against anything and say revival, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> Is that much growth? You're like well, right. you from this to this. This, yeah. You know what I'm saying, and and um, you know, like even if those other guys helped, or say the other band members helped, it still shows growth for everybody, right? You know so you know, you know, I I was kind of glad, you know, I I was glad that it, that meant it wasn't a single, but then I kind of wish it was. So people could see like just how dope, you know what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. this was because it's like it's like you said, like, okay, oh, like 
he like the hey little Walter dudes. Like, no, like listen to this song. <laughs> no, listen to I it. guarantee you won't say that about them. Anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, like this, this, this tune, man, like, you know, if um if someone asked me, like, hey, like give me one good song about him, I'd give him this. Like, I wouldn't give him, you know, like the hits. Hits. I, yeah. I, I say I'd give him this one and be like, yo, like run with this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Now, that's me. I know some other people out there might be like, man, Rick, you're tripping this. <laughs> you know, you know well, this, over, this, anniversary? This over anniversary? What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, hey, <sighs> we'll get to that. Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, yeah, man. Like this one was just, I mean, so you know, it was such a pleasant surprise. Like, I mean, like this was the you know what? Like listening to this on CD back in the day, like this was the one I I went back and played again after I heard mm. it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I gotta make sure I heard that correctly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, probably amongst the top, you know, four or five tracks off of this album. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's one. Like I said, I you know, the the Madhouse style intro, mm -hmm. you know, the beat. Um, you know the everything about that song. I mean, this is a straight up composition. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, this ain't no track. This is a right. <laughs> this is a composition. Well, you know what? We got to phrase that. <laughs> this is a composition. composition. Hashtag. This is a composition. Schools in. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, but. Uh, Okay, man. So, what about Gangsta Groove? That's what I like. Um, yeah, not, yeah. It's not you know like the top five on the album, but now, yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, say this is the one where they got the. Um, it's got a lot of, like the black. It's got the black exploitation um, lines out of what they saying in in, in uh, say the song, yeah. which is which is uh, which is like I um, mean to your point of hearing the like, influences. Cause if you're familiar with the Mac, yes, <laughs> and then you hear, you're just like, oh man, I guess. and they're from Oakland. So, yeah, I mean, so yep. again, you know, like they're really, you know, I mean, what you didn't catch in the first two albums, and and I mean, in terms of you know the like influence sounds and things like that, right? You know, this one, you know, again, like reinforces that one because now you're getting. You know, so not just their musical like influence, but their you know surrounding. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you know, um, per, um, I mean, too short, and then the Mac documentary. Like everybody in Oakland yep. got, um, <laughs> had a family member like that was in that movie some kind of way, some so, way, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So, so and um, I mean, so you know, I I know back then. You know, back in like '93, like that. That was because Ice Cube had done a song called "Who's the Mac." Back, right. in, you know, like his first solo thing in '90. So um, that movie was kind of like resurfacing amongst you know young males our age. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, with the advent of VHS tapes, that you know, yeah. Blockbuster and all that. Then you know, video shops all all man around. So um, mm. you know, like black exploitation films were being you know, you know, kind of, um, kind of reissue. So, so stuff that you yeah. could get for years. And they like, oh yeah, the Mac. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so like this, this, that, or whatever. So, so like our era was, kind of, you know, like our age group. I mean, male wise was kind of fascinated with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Oh, like, who was this dude? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, what's this movie? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I kind of wonder what the origins of this song. Were. Yeah, because you had, because. I you know I kind of go back to Oakland Stroke from the uh, revival. Uh, okay, and it was kind of a de it was a decent track, but I'm kind of wondering like, nah, you got to really represent Oakland. It's like okay, cool, you know, <laughs> Tower Power, okay, cool, but nah, you got to get some Sly in there. You got to get some Larry Graham in there, and like you say, you got to pull some of the Mac into you I, know. <laughs> I, I I mean, so you know. Um... Even though we're what I know, we're like nine songs in, you know, right. kind of over the halfway mark. I've always wondered 
like which one of these songs was recorded first and then which one was it recorded last yeah and and so like you know um you know like what was it about this song that made mm. the cut that another song didn't make the cut or if there is another song or you know like which like brings me back to like which one was recorded first and last because like right. this is one of the first ones you're like okay yeah we got some you know like we could go do some other stuff or is this like yeah we need one more and it's like all right all right <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know like was it like a rush thing you know what i'm saying because or i mean still like was it in say the mix you know like was it yeah you know, like before uh, like an ex-girlfriend or was it after mm. or like, it comes around? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, like, were there stronger stuff done before it, afterwards? You know what I'm saying? Like, where was it done? Um, and I only asked that because, like you said, it's not a weak song. It's not the strongest on, say, the album. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you hear it, and it and it's, it's like, okay, you know, they, you know like they're doing, like, kind of like skits. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Which it fits. You know, mm. you're like, you know, like as you're doing an album, you know, is it like, all right, if it's the first song, you're like, okay, is is not the rest of the album gonna be like this? Or, you know, <laughs> it's getting this out of our system. You know what I'm mm. saying? To get warmed up for the other stuff type deal. So, yeah, you know, it's uh that's why I say I wonder what the you know, what was the mindset putting this together? Because like you said, all all of that could be a factor. Yeah. Like, you know, when, you know, was this the first thing they cut? Was it somewhere in the middle? It's like, okay, well, we need one more album track. Yeah. Um, in a way, it also kind of reminds me, you know, what, you know, kind of wrecked, you know, our momentum back in the day <laughs> trying to do music, you know, because we yeah. started off like kind of, you know, coming up in the early 80s, you know, we had the time as influences, Prince, you know, maybe earlier stuff like Parliament Funkadelic. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you get to the mid to late night or 80s. And then you've got like this hip hop influence coming in. And it's like, well, OK, you know, we were at that age where, yeah, hip hop took effect. Like, you know, I was like 13 when Rapper's Delight came out. But then, you know, trying to figure out what should we sound like, mm. you know, because, you know, New Jack Swing was kicking in, hip hop was kicking in. So it was kind of like, well, I don't know, maybe some of this Minneapolis stuff is going to be kind of old hack or, you know, maybe we should try to do something to kind of keep up. And I'll tell you that for, for us back then, that kind of wrecked it because it was like, well, we could do hip, but could we really do hip hop? Yeah. Yeah. And then you would see where, you know, Prince tried to get into that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I man, could only gather that from, I mean, from the title, because at that time, gangster rap was, was like very, it's really, yeah. Making a lot of headlines. And so, um, you know, it was a spin on that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I guess they kind of maybe spin off the negative connotation. You know what I'm saying? Because again, yeah. you know, the the stuff that they're saying in the song, you know, if you're familiar with the Mac, you're like, oh, I, you know, or, right. or like other black exploitation films, you're like, hey, like I heard that. You know what I'm saying? So I know that. You know what I'm right. saying? So, so like, it's, it's like a play on that. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, but again, yeah, like I mean, because that word gangster, um, you know, was 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 like very controversial, you know, you know, in terms of musical terms. Right. And so, um, you know, just could have been a spin on that, but that's you know, I mean, when I mean, you know, maybe they'll come on, you know, maybe they'll share it with us. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Hey Dwayne, you know what I'm saying? You know, like give us a shout, brother, you know what I'm saying? Man, tell yeah. us like, what was the, you know, I mean. I mean, I mean, hey, look, man, who, I mean, who knows, you know, dude could have been watching the Mac one night, you know, while they was recording him on the break. I'm like, yeah, yep. I have no idea. It was like, yep, there's that. You know, it you know is. I mean, and that happens, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, say, so, you know, like, I mean, because, you know, I mean, like, I mean, to your point, like with the Madhouse stuff on 16, you hear the Godfather stuff. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, uh, you know, in a, uh, you know, like vocal passages in between the songs. Samples, yeah. So, 
So I mean, I mean, you know, like they could have just done that, like, oh, you know, let, let's let's do something let's like that. on that. You know what I'm saying? And right. that's you know, like very likely. So cool. But yeah, hey, you know, Dwayne, if you catch this brother, Tim, <laughs> yeah. leave a comment and you know, yeah, you know, let us know when the Tony 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 documentary is coming to whoever hey. Netflix, Amazon, or <laughs> <laughs> Hulu. <laughs> yeah. Now this next one, man, <laughs> Tony didn't say the wrong key. That one was uh I mean, first of all, I always thought the intro was dope. Yeah. That that, you know, I always yeah. thought that was um it, you know, it was just dope. I, like, like I can't I can't explain it, man. You know, um I was like, well, they got a show opener. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, like forever with that one. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then it's so, you know, it's so fitting because it's Tony's in the wrong key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> key in the joint. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of telling the origin story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, which I thought was, um, you know, like I thought it was cool because, because, because say, you know, um, you know, like there's like an art to putting albums together. Yeah. Saying, yes. well, like you got your up tempo songs and you got your love songs. You man got this, you got that, and so they had a song where it was, you know, kind of humorous. Like let's, mm -hmm. you know, like you know, like let's, you know, like play on this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, George Clinton was a master at doing that because yeah, you'd have something, <laughs> he'd have some quirky in there. You'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you mean what is this? You know. <laughs> And 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 so, yeah. and then, so this was that because like when you just look at I mean like when you go into the CD um in a record store and then you pick it up and you're looking at the title you say Tony's in the wrong key. <laughs> What's Tony's this one? one? Right. Yeah. I mean like you man just never think and then it's you know him kind of just narrating um how they got together, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got started and then it's got that, you know, like that break in it where they're spelling out stuff again. Right. And so, you know, I thought that was, you know, I thought it was a, a man. I mean, you know, those two tunes, I mean, again, you know, like people don't, you know, rave about those, mm. but I think they break up the album or like keep it flowing. Right. And say a way where, I mean, so whereas I had, I mean, had they not been there, you would have had like you know I couldn't keep it to uh, and to myself mm. you know like going straight to dance hall right and, yeah and 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 so like this breaks up the girl you did me wrong baby I want you you know what I'm saying like those yeah. things and it's like oh it's cool you know what I'm saying you know, mm. some, I mean something kind of refreshing and it's I don't I mean again they didn't have that those type of tunes on the like revival album, nor did right. they have it on House of Music. You know what I'm saying? Where it was something in there that was kind of, you know, you know, man, lighthearted. You know what I'm saying? I think brilliant yeah. you know, like, um, and stuff. But yeah, but it was cool. I know what you think of Dance Hall. Yeah, I like that one. Um again, probably not one of the top five or anything like that, but you brought up an interesting point uh, about, you know, putting these songs together, you know, the sequencing mm -hmm. of an album. And, you know, we're kind of neat. And this is what, 93? Mm -hmm. um, we kind of had, I mean, CDs have been around really since like the early 80s, but mostly like in Japan or something. But as yeah. far as like the rest of the world, say about what, 86, 87? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 85. Roughly. Yeah. yeah. So... You know, the way you would put together a CD versus an LP, you know, you would have X number of songs, you know, at certain lengths, mm -hmm. you know, maybe by late 60s, early 70s, you kind of had more flexibility, you know, like say James Brown would have, you know, a 15, 20 minute song yeah, yeah. on one side. Yeah. But with the CD, you had to feel that space mm, with okay. a lot of that yeah and i think where 
maybe if this was, I don't know if, if this is on vinyl, is it like a single? Um, vinyl? But I don't know. You know, like, I mean, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a big vinyl person. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't have, if it is, I wouldn't have noticed, you know, like, yeah. I would, it's like either way. Um, yeah. I, I will say this, this song, when I heard that they went to Trinidad to like record and stuff, uh, this song made more sense. I was like, I was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? The influence, right. Yeah. I know because, um, I mean, again, you know, this was when like Shaba Ranks was blown yeah, up. Yeah, I was just thinking about it, right. And, um, it had blown up, you know, leading up to this period. Um, Cause he had, you know, kind of blown up in 90, you know, late 92 ish. Right. Um, early at 91. And he was, I know for me, yeah. um, because I was in college at the time at the Virginia State University. Uh, shout out. Shout um, out. <laughs> um, and so if you, uh, I know it, I know like at HBCU parties, you know, the DJ would do these things where he play like, it will be a, you know, a phase of, you know, hip hop music, then be a phase of house music. It would mm -hmm. be a phase of dance hall. And then yeah. it would back to, you know what I'm saying? And so like dance hall was, 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 um, if you were on a college campus, man, you heard it probably more than anywhere else. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then, um, I mean, you know, Shaba, you know, had kind of, you know, broken through the airwaves. Made it more, I would say, probably more mainstream. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, because Living Color did a spoof on him and all that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so like when I heard this, um, you know, like initially, I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, like dance. I mean, you know, I, I you know, I didn't think, you know, like more like or less of it. But then when but then like when I heard that they had gone to like, like the islands to do the album, I said, okay, that makes sense. Makes that, more like, sense. Yeah. You know, you know, like that I could hear that I mean maybe where you know being there during that time, seeing some things may have influenced mm -hmm. cause I think they might have been there during I mean like during carnival time or something like that or whatever. And so yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know. I, I mean, you know, kind of like um, it's like you know, like when Maurice White talks about going to like Brazil, and then yeah. on like the All in All album, I mean, you hear like Brazilian rhymes. rhymes. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, bet. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, so so yeah, like this, this, this made more, um, you know, it. it I mean, kind of brought that aspect. Uh, um, yeah, more so than any other tune. This one, I could really feel like okay, like that influence was here. Yeah, you know, when they did this one, that um, I know that Times Square uh, skit man was kind of <laughs> filler. Nashville, don't be shy. shy. <laughs> Just average singing homeless <laughs> guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My rap. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, a riddle. <laughs> yeah, I, man. I mean, say so, you know, it's um, how can I say it? Um, when you live in a major city, uh, so you know, you you see a lot of things. Yeah, and homelessness is one of them. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? and so like you see people. Homeless. I know you see people on on say the corners, man. You know, I would say the squeegee bottle. You know, what I'm saying want to clean sure. the shields and things like that. So um, when I heard that, I had seen that guy. You know, what I'm saying yeah. I had gas yeah. stations. You know, seen that guy. You know, what I'm saying I mean coming out of stores. You yeah. know, what I'm I had seen that. So um, you know, I I I could relate to that on say a lot of yeah. levels and as i think back on it man shout out to them for uh you know of all the interludes to include you know what i'm saying so you do something like it, that <laughs> you know? yeah i know it, it is kind of it is filler but it's like you said it, it brought a touch of realism yeah to the you know to the whole aspect of i guess i don't know i, I don't know if you want to call it a concept album but you know, if you're talking Sons of Soul, and especially, you know, early 70s, maybe late 60s, but definitely early 70s. Yeah. A lot of social commentary. 
Right. You know, but yeah, I guess you know they, you know, I, I don't know. I'll take it back. I won't say it's filler, but it was a way for them to do social commentary without having to write a song about it. You know, because you had so much hip hop that spelled it out anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that's going on, whether it's, you know, in the inner city or even, you know, the world, you already had that. And then you also had, you know, say Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation yeah, as well. You know, but I think with Tony, 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 it was like they wanted to keep a certain realism and, you know, their sound is more grounded you know, as opposed to Revival and yeah. then even more so than their first one. But they weren't, I guess they weren't, or they may have felt like, well, let's not just go into Curtis Mayfield and Marvin Gaye territory, but we should have something on there to kind of yeah, let us know that we're aware. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 mean, man, I mean, you know, like even just in hindsight, um, they could have just called like Tyler Collins back and been like, hey, look, come record this thing for, you know what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. been, y'all ain't all that, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't got to be here. You know, I mean, it could have been anything. Anything, yeah. You know? And and so for it to be that, um, yeah, I mean, because again, say, so, you know, to, to kind of um, separate themselves from the, you know, man, the suit wearing, groups with the yeah. shoulder pads <laughs> you know what i'm saying it was just like nah you know and like you said like grounded because hip-hop was very grounded yeah so um you know i i don't know if 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 um you know there weren't a lot of you know like r&b groups or male singers weren't really looked at um being grounded, you know what I'm saying, like Jodeci to a certain extent, but even that was kind of like, uh, you know, it, yeah, it was. I want to say it was more contrived because they, you know, at least the the Haley brothers were, you know, probably in one of the most renowned, oh, you know, gospel, yeah, harmonies, and you know, you hear so much of that about, especially then, you know, everybody forced to kind of conform to being gangster at that point yeah yeah you okay know? yeah i mean yeah so yeah i mean what i mean by that yeah you're absolutely right is that um whatever rb acts did it it was kind of perceived as kind of extra like it wasn't it i mean it wasn't authentic yeah you know, like it didn't feel like yeah like this is really them you know what i'm saying right and so um because i remember with this release um you know, seeing little segments on like MTV News about them like rehearsing for Janet's tour and stuff like that or whatever. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know, wearing like set, they were saying something about wearing like 70s clothes or throwbacks or, or and then like whatever. Um, and then, you know, man, at that time, and only brother doing it, man, was Lenny Kravitz. Right. I, I mean, you know, I oh. never thought that it was like a gimmick for, you know, skills or anything that it was. You, you know, like, no, that's them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, 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 like, when I heard this, um, you know, I never thought, like, yeah, they trying too hard now. You know what I'm saying? Like, those thoughts, I mean, never came to mind. Right. You know, what they doing this for? It, you know, it, it's a, I mean, from my initial hearing, it, even like to, even like to this day, like, when I replay it and it goes all the way through, I'm just like, yeah, like, you know, this, that they, you know, they did it, and I, you know, I'm glad that they did it, you know what I'm saying, but it, you know, just kind right. of, like, okay, I mean, you know, because they could have gone, I mean, in another direction, you know what I'm saying, you know, yeah. like something else, you know, but they chose that, and and so, um, and then, like you said, you know, if you're looking at, you know, them being sons of soul, I know the era that, I mean, influenced them in the social commentary piece, mm -hmm. you know, man, was big, so, yeah, kudos to that. Man, oh, yeah. this tune, fun. Uh, <laughs> one of the most underrated tunes on his album. I love that song, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think it kind of, it brings it back, you know, because you got kind of that similar thing going on with the first four or five cuts on the album. Yeah. And then I think this kind of ties it all together. You know, that, that, that use of that, 
<laughs> I mean, you know that. I mean, like you said, it, man. Uh, they, they, you know, I mean, you know, this album. You know, I, I've, you know, I've always said like, there's, you know, like every group has that one album where it all just comes together. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, I like to think it's all in all for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Some other people may differ. You know what I'm saying? They may say that's the word of the world. Some may say spirit. Some, some like I am. You know what I'm saying? I personally think it's, you know, all in all. But I know for the Tonys, I think this is the one that it came together. And yeah. I, I mean, this is us. And so, like, with this song, I mean, again, I'm glad it wasn't a single, but I hate that people don't know that they can do stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, and I wonder I wonder if it's because we don't think of and not we, but you know, people don't think of Tony 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 as an album band. You know, where you know, you have D'Angelo mm -hmm. come out, you know, three albums deep and it's about the album. Yeah, you know, each album has like maybe hits or there's certain tracks that true. You know, people okay. talk about more, but at the end of that conversation, it's always about, ooh, this is brown sugar. This is, you know, Black like Messiah. This is voodoo, right? Yeah. You know, where I don't think you get that with Tony, Tony, Tony. And I guess it's easy to say that because you didn't really have that with the first album. You just had yeah. the hits, you know. I don't think, because, no, I see... I didn't have the first album, but I know people that had it, but yeah. it was always about the hits. Yeah. Um, the revival was actually the first Tony, Tony, Tony album I actually bought. Okay. And with that one, and I was thinking about that while I was listening to this was like with that album, even to this day, I still haven't taken to a lot of the tracks that weren't hits. Mm, okay. on that one and you know sometimes I would play it just like okay well what does this song sound like or do I like this song Yeah, and yeah some of the tracks on that one they don't hit quite as hard but when you do you know listen to say you know House of Music or Sons of Soul then it becomes more about you know for me anyway more about the, the album. album you know I I would probably say um, this is the one where people probably do consider it more about the album. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like some people argue and say the house of music is better. I personally think this one is. Uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, like, again, I think this one is like that, you know, in the moment where it kind of came together for them. And it was like, yeah. you, you said, you know, like the first one was like, hey, look, we got a deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, yeah. You know, like I'm sure they didn't go in no. not trying to make it a success. You know what I'm saying? But I think this one, as compared to many others, was more of them and their identity. Because again, you know, like Denny and Tommy did a lot on the first one. They didn't do a right. lot in the second one, but they were still there. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was that, yeah, that kind of transition. And with this one, because you had the soundtrack work in, say, between, I know, because Raphael has, has said in interviews that the first time he ever produced anything on his own was that Ralph, uh, was that Ralph Tresvant song that he wrote for him for House Party 2. Okay. So, again, so, like, you have, you know, like, like, me and you, and then you got the two songs on, like, House Party 2. So there's some confidence there, like, okay, yeah, you know, you know, like confidence in terms of you know writing and then like producing like, okay mm -hmm. like this was the one where you know there is no Denny and Tommy anywhere you know right saying? it's <laughs> just them you know and they had toured that they had done you know what I'm saying like some live stuff so it was like all right bet and that yeah that helps grow it helps you know and, and and so I think this song um it, I mean it 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 I mean you know, just captures, um, I mean, the song title, fun, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But, you know, um, to your point again about, you know, 
I, you know, I would like to think that, you know, like, what if this had come out of the time that the social media was around and there were clips of them performing these songs, you know what I'm saying, doing these songs? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it you know, there might be a different outcome or, like, different outlook for them now, you know? Right. But, you know, like, people that, people who are really fans and know they, you know, like, this is... You know, I mean, like this album is one of the ones that they, you know, are like yeah, you know, this album, right? And so, um, I think this is is a great piece to to man the puzzle of Sam's album. It's one of the songs where if I play this album, I I I I have to play this song as well. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> you know, just just like the wordplay, even. And say the lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the back. I mean, again, you know, I know you talk about the Jackson Five type, you know, Jackson's type and vocal arrangements, you know, mm -hmm. playing off each other type deal. You know how they do that. You know, I thought it was real cool. So yeah, 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 yeah. Fun is dope, man. Now this next tune, <laughs> 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 you know what? <laughs> I will say this. This is what actually made me buy the album. Because um, I was okay. a kid. But I had gone in Tower Records. I guess it had come out, you know, maybe like a week or so, whatever. Mm. So, you know, back then, I mean, like record stores would, would be playing, you know, various stuff. And they, they were playing it. And somehow, I don't remember fun, but I remember this. Uh -huh. I remember thinking like, man, is this this Tony 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 <laughs> <this> today? Because <laughs> I went in for something else, and I uh -huh. was, it was like this girl was with me, my my coworker, and like we were walking around Tower Records, and I was just like, yo, you hear that? It was like, that's like bang, you right? There. And it was like other people, like I was in Tower Records, I never forget it, man, by Lennox Square Mall, you know, uh -huh. my Atlanta people. Uh, man, we was in there, and I remember just it's like, yo. Like, wow, like, what's this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just like, man, if this is the joint, you know, like this is, you know, I was mm. like, man, yo, they've done it again with, <laughs> with this one, and um, and I remember, man, the person playing it was like, yo, like this album is, is this, okay? Because <laughs> I asked them, I said, yo, like is that Tony, Tony, Tony? They was like, yeah. I said, I, I mean, you know, because you have to ask back then, is that on this new album? <laughs> they were like, yeah. I was like. Man, that's okay. He was like, "Yeah, man, it's 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 like that." You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's um. I mean, again, like you were saying, like earlier about you know, like setting yourself apart with say the ballads mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Um, this was the one where I think I was so happy that they had like another hit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then people would would like you know like check for them you know and buy the, you know I mean buy the single or buy the CD or say what right. happened. But I was happy that they had you know like like this nice follow up. You know you know and to keep it you know I mean make I mean you know like nice follow up just to let people know that they're still like, like contenders and say the game. Yeah, because yeah. you got a lot of quiet storm play. <laughs> Got a lot of quiet stories. Oh, I tell you, yeah. My experience was different because, like I said, I'm all up and down the highway on this one. And, you know, just after listening to fun, I'm like, okay, you know, man, this is a great album. And then this kicks in, you know, and, this, and, it, and it does hit you right away. Dun, 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 dun. And but I would say once you know Raphael starts singing and you start listening to the lyrics of it, mm -hmm. it's like wow, this is the to me this was like the best ballad they had ever done, maybe equal to just like you know just me and you probably equal to that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, like I remember when they opened up for Janet and I saw him that year and then they got to this song, it's like the crowd lost it. Yeah. Uh, 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 it's like the crowd lost it on me and you too because of how they set that up and brought that in. Right. Which was dope. But then like, when they got to this one, it was like they was, you know, because 
I I say with RQ, this song probably gets played every day because somewhere somebody's anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like this one probably gets, you know, somewhere every day, like this song is being played by somebody. You're right. To you know, celebrate the anniversary. And you know, I thought it was a uh I mean, you know, they just, you know, how they said what uh me called lightning saying the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, it's like a timeless title. Like, it's our anniversary. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you know, like, that's, 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 you know, I know for our yeah. era, you know what I'm saying? Like, people that go play this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, this, this obliterates Ray Goodman and Brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This, this, this obliterates. <laughs> You know, that, that track was nice for, you know, 1980, 1981, but I'm sorry, Tony, Tony, Tony came out with Anniversary, and like you said, it's become a, it's a class, a timeless classic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly, man, like one of them songs where, like, you know, and um, it just never gets old. I mean, I mean, no. it's like pretty brown eyes. It's like you just never get tired of hearing it. Hearing it, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, um, and you can hear it. Of, I mean, arranged in so many ways, you know, stripped down, full band, you yeah. know, solo type, piano type deal. I know what have you, but it man just never gets old, um, and it has withstood the test of time. I mean, you know, I I I'd argue to anybody. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like thirty years later. You know, like, does this sound dated? No. No. You know, and I mean, you know, like, no offense to the, um, you know, the songs that were out at that time, you know, Silk, you know, Freak, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, all those, you know, like, this this one, you know, you know, like, by far, you know, like, you know, outshines, you know, like those, those, those songs. And, yeah, that were out at that time, you know, shy. Yeah, you know that. I mean, you know, like this one just, they, yeah. <laughs> just, they they have they have their place, um, but like you said, this one they wrote it, you know, with you know such a broad, you know, canvas to work with, where you know it. Because I think you know the lyrics, I think are more just, I guess, ro romantic. I guess as opposed to, you know, say like a Marvin Gaye album where you mm -hmm. know that's intended to set a certain mood. You know where this one, yeah, you know, anniversary. There's so much you can put into that, you know, yeah. and it's all and it's all in the lyrics. You know, you know everything about an anniversary. You know whether you're trying to plan something or. You know, you just going to dinner or you just having a nice night out or something like that. You know, it's you know, it's it's universal. You know, I would even go as far as to say, you know, this is probably one of the best ballads ever written, period. Oh, he's oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, most definitely. I mean, say, so, you know, uh <laughs> it's funny because um in like the recent years, if you ever caught Raphael live, mm -hmm. um, I know his last tour when he did his last like Jimmy Lee tour, um, he would do this segment where he play songs that and he wrote for other people. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think if I'm not mistaken, they had gotten to this where he did like he did like I mean, a Tony 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 medley type deal. And I heard somebody go, I said, I forgot he wrote this song like when he came to this one. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, oh man. Like, yeah. So I mean, you know, he's he's man say, you know, I I I have um, you know, I was telling somebody, because I was like, say, you know, he 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 his he has been a part of the uh you know, like the fabric of our black music. Yeah. Like, shoot, like this is 30 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about, you know, man, the facets of, you know, stuff he's done. Tony's, Kitty D'Angelo. Right. 
He did Lucy he solo stuff, stuff. Lucy Per, yeah. He did his solo <laughs> stuff. He wrote the, you know, gay Solange, made her biggest hit. Yeah. And he wrote yeah. Cuff It for, you know what I'm saying? He did Cuff It for like Beyonce. Yeah. His last one. And then, I mean, man, you know, you got the little stuff in between, like Total, like Kissing You. you oh, know, okay. Stuff he did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I say like all these different things, you know what I'm saying? And so, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, like this is, this is, and so, I mean, you know, I'm, you know, because I, you know, I like jumped on the, you know, board, you know, back when the Tonys first came out to see this, you know, like, I mean, even with Dwayne and them doing Diary for Alicia Keys, you're just like, man. Like, oh, yeah, too. yeah, that's right. I forgot about you know, that, too, I, yeah. I mean, like, when I discovered that, I remember thinking, like, that's why. <laughs> 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 okay, that's why. That, that makes sense. Sounds, you know, and if you think about it, she hadn't had anything else sounding like that since. since. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Elijah Baker, you know, the other guys, and then he helped like, I mean, with that, too. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, just a testament to all of these brothers, man, not just the three in the front, you know, right. all of them, you know, I mean, in terms of what they've done. Right, I was going to say the, um, was that the lead guitarist? Jubu? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you say, props to his musicianship, because, yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of those, a lot of the riffs on here came from him. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, again, it's that coming, you know what I'm saying? It was just, you know, like this, like this one was the most, I I mean, man, in my opinion, I thought it was their most, I guess, cohesive. I mean, yeah. if, you know, I know Elijah Baker, some of the other guys who weren't there, you know, like for the recording piece, I think might say differently, but in terms of the three, Jubu and I guess whoever else man they use, you know. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, up until that particular time, and then, and then, like even the one afterwards. Like, if you look at all four of the albums, I think this one was the one that made their stamp on. Like, this is who we are, right? This is what we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is us. And it was no more of, well, let's try to do the, you know, what I'm saying like the new jack thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it, you know, they totally separated themselves from yeah. those labels. And you had to look at them differently and, and be like, all right, yeah, like they're you know, like they're legitimate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I think this was the album that, you know, like years later when people would say, well, it's only two black bands, men and the Tonys. Like this was mm-hmm. the one that made them, you know what I'm saying? I like gave them, yeah. you know, that 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 label of okay, like we're a band, you know what I'm saying? You know, like people took the, the, people saw them as as being a band. You know what I'm saying? Right. They were last last band stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. 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 As Chuck D would say. <laughs> oh, okay. Last. Yeah. Hey, man. Say so you know what? And and man, um, you know, like I'll say this because then we got to wrap up soon. Um, you know, I mean, thirty years afterwards, man. I mean, looking back. I I I would say um, this album has kind of aged very well. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I think if you put it on, it's still go get the same reaction. You know what I'm saying? It's not go sound dated. No, it's not go sound. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, you could tell like that was the early '90s. You know what I'm saying? It's um, you know, just I think it's their best. You know and. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's fitting that, you know, 30 years after it's a release, you know, like the, uh, well, uh, 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 I don't know, the three up front are like getting back together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I hope, <laughs> you know, that, you know, that they can patch it up with the other guys, you know, I mean, Elijah, Carl, you know, like Antron. Yeah. Know, and say, you know, because, I mean, so, you know, people would, I mean, you know, people would love to see their unit, you know, like them, you know, back. Yeah, the original, yeah. Yeah. And classic and, lineup. You know, if that happens, cool. If say it doesn't, um, say, you know, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I understand. But yeah. I mean, say, you know, um, I I think, you know, I'm I'm so glad that when this was released, 
I was around. It was released in my time. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I've, you know, and I've been able to, to, you know, like get it and enjoy it. And like 30 years still, you know, man, consider it, you know, probably in one of the gems in my collection. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I don't, you know, I make no qualms about that. That's why, you know, like when I suggested it to you, I was like, man, it's 30 years. <laughs> God, dude, I know. Yeah. You sent me the text. I was like, man, it, damn, it has been 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, man. It has been. And, and uh, say, you know, like when say you look at, you know, like, I mean, man, society now, man, is fascinating with like top this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, do a top albums like R&B, you know what I'm saying? Funk history. Man, this one has to be up in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, big time. Oh, we didn't, what I call the the Stevie Wonder one. We didn't oh. talk about that the last. <laughs> Man, so you know what? Um, is that like named after, is that title named after, I don't know, mascots at one of your high schools or something like that or whatever? I don't know. That reason. sounds, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah, I know it's you know it's uh it's a minute long. Yeah. Yeah, minute 19 seconds long, which I was looking at anniversary and when you listen to it you're so into the song, you really don't realize it's 9 minutes and 24 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, cuz it keeps going and going and then right. I mean, even when they fade it out, you're like, "Oh, it's over." It's yeah. <laughs> No, more, make it nine more minutes. Nine yeah. more minutes. Yeah. But yeah, um, but the last track, yeah, Castle Castleers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though it's short, like I said, I've always had that feeling like you know this is Stevie Wonder influence, you know, because it's just basically just keyboards and you know the way that Raphael kind of phrases lyrics. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of got that little Stevie esque. That uh, music Played of my two. mind, you know, you know, the intervisions type era, right? Yeah, stuff. Yeah. Which again, you know, sons of sons of soul, that would have been a part of it. It, it definitely would have been a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, man, it's, you know, like this, this, um, I, you know, I, I wish they were in a position to do a, a it was like a reissue. You know, like maybe have some boot, you know, like I mean, uh, man, some demos or something. Demos and or 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 like you know, man, some unreleased tracks that didn't make the album. You know, you know, what I'm saying like anything, man, it kind of made, I guess, commemorated. But I understand. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's like how we were, you know, talking about uh, cameo the last few episodes. You know, who owns the the masters and who owns the publishing and yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, let's see. And, and, I mean, you know, hopefully they'll 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 man resurrect some of these songs live on tour. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know, they're headlining, so so you yeah. know, like, they have time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know they definitely have time. That, so. Cool, man. Yeah. Look, thanks for having me for this. Oh, uh, anytime, anytime. Let's see. Oh, let's see. We got a one last one la last track. <laughs> And that's the uh -oh. waiting for you from the Poetic Justice soundtrack. Oh, you know what? I'm glad you brought it up because I heard from DOA. Okay. <laughs> so now the, the, the backstory. <laughs> he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Said, said trip to well, is is I was gonna say we'll we'll do the backstory and then you know you we'll we'll have the official story. <laughs> So I bought the Poetic Justice okay. soundtrack. Yeah. I bought the Poetic Justice soundtrack uh, maybe like a week or two, I think, before I bought Sons of Soul. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, both cassettes rode up and down the highway on that trip to Minneapolis. Um, and like I said, every time I went, it coincided with the Minneapolis Black Music Expo. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't think I went, like, the first my first trip but this was like the second trip and at that time i could only afford like say one workshop because i wasn't planning on going you know i'm just going up spending time with family and all that 
But I was like, oh, okay, well, let me check. Oh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis at the workshop? Okay, let me go check it out then. And also at that workshop was uh, Full Force and a couple of members of um, Low Key. And, you know, after the workshop, you know, there was an opportunity to, you know, go and chat. Didn't get a chance to chat with Jimmy Jam or Terry Lewis, but I did get to chat with Full Force and Low Key. And somehow we got on the topic of um, the song Waiting For You, which Tony, Tony, Tony did on the Poetic Justice soundtrack. And we all were raving about the bass line because we all thought, you know, Raphael played the bass line on that track. <laughs> and talking to you before the show, you were like, <laughs> nah, nah, son. <laughs> <laughs> also, Raphael didn't play bass on that track. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, hi, right. Mr. Wyatt, sir. <laughs> well, hey, what I say is, first of all, man, Raphael is one of my favorite bass players. Like, yes, I, right. I learned um, in the bass line to, you know, the ex-girlfriend and, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, I couldn't keep it to myself an anniversary if I had no loop. You right. Know, and, you know, like, off this album. Um, which you know, actually, you know, if you think about it, most of those tracks that you mentioned, you know, it's more, more finger style. Yeah, and you know, there's yeah. no real thumping and plucking on it. But yeah. waiting yeah. for you, man, those you know, those are some Larry Graham worthy octaves. <laughs> He's hitting on that. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so here are two things that 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 I I mean I gotta add just just a little bit more backstory to. Okay. Fall 92, Chucky Booker puts out his second solo album. Okay. You know, nice and wild. And so if you know, you know, I'm sure those of us who are familiar man, with Chucky Booker, you know, he's like phenomenal. Yeah. And so he has um on that album, he has this thing called Soul Trilogy, one, two, and three. Okay. And so it's a throwback to like the James Brown type bands because song, you know, he's talk as as man, the song is starting off, he's talking to this guy, and he's like, Yeah, man, like no kick track live, you know, and then they're like, You live, you're like the JVs. And so they do huh. the song. And then on one of the other versions, maybe it's version two, like Soul Trilogy Two or Soul Trilogy Three, he says the only one that man could pull like this off are like my boys, the Tonys. Mm. And so, <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying, just you know, point out there. Also on that album, and who toured with him, because he was a bass player on, say, the Janet Resonation Tour, okay. was the DOA Allen. And so if you read the credits, he's mentioned in, say, the credits, you know, like, I think for playing on, say, a song or two. Well, mm. when the Poet of Justice thing came out, you know, for those of us that read credits, when I saw that name, I was like, hey, I know that name. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? He played bass with like Chucky Booker, did the Janet thing, you know, type deal. I was like, oh, so he wrote the song. Okay. So as we were talking about this, I sent him a DM message on Instagram, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, about the tune. And he said, Drum roll. <laughs> he did play the bass line. He said he did everything. He said background vocals, all the music, except the strings, and said that like, Chucky Booker did that. And then oh, wow. he, <laughs> he, 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 he says basically it was just him and Raphael. Wow. <laughs> so, so yeah. So you know, shout out to DOA, man, because yeah, yeah, you're right. Because when you hear that song. Like the bass line stands out, like <laughs> just grab, I mean, it's it's just in your face type deal. I mean, like it won't be denied. Dude, I mean, I'm telling you, man, I'm surprised the cassette didn't break from <laughs> rewinding and playing that over. <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 so again, like we were saying, and said, so, you know, like before we started, man, I mean, recording was that, um, you know, like Raphael always did John Singleton soundtracks justice because he always had a song right there that was like, you know, just like, you know, like banging, like, you know, they talk about me and you with boys in the hood. Right. Eating on you, 
I know with this one, and then and I know like just ask of you. I know we're higher learning. I mean, learning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like those three alone, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, I mean, again, like this was a nice, you know, what's funny is that I know you mentioned that song. You could put that song on this album and it would fit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, like even though say it wasn't on, you know, on say this album, but it's in that era, it's in that time frame, it fits. You know, right. you know, it doesn't feel like, well, it's just a song like for, the, you know, it's just a throwaway track for the movie. No, it actually, you know, could work in in in, in this album's track listing. Like me and you could work in this album's track listing. True. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. So, yeah, man. But that's that's, you know, man, shout out to DOA. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah. It, very, so thanks for. Yeah. Thanks for the dope. answer. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, a very, very, very dope track, man. Like I, I think I remember being very surprised um, when I saw that. And then, like you said, like you know, because it was like maybe during the pandemic, um, I came across it again. I was just like, mm -hmm. man, I forgot about this track. This joint, you know, what I'm saying, it still cranks. Yeah. But to, yeah, next time, well, if he's listening to the show, you just tell him, man. <laughs> Definitely yeah, send it to him. <laughs> Full Force was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's funny, man. Yeah, like I'm gonna definitely share this with him. Yeah. Thanks, man. But yeah. But yeah. I mean, this was. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me about this too, because I'm mm -hmm. like I said, just playing it, and like I said, just happened to be in the car, just listening to it on streaming. It's just like it. It was that same effect, you know. Just like man. Just going up to see family, spending mm -hmm. time in Minneapolis and the sites and like I said, the expo and like I said, just having that dialogue, you know, with some good musicians about mm -hmm. other good musicians. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. That that's um <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that that thing was one of those tunes. I was like, all right, I gotta learn that baseline. Like I gotta <laughs> Learn that, so. yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what's up. That's yeah, what's I got to figure out how to do, do, do. <laughs> Oh man, hey, you know what? Maybe he'll do a video about this DOA. Like when you see this, maybe do a video for it. Yeah, <laughs> cool say stuff. master class. <laughs> yeah, In indeed, man. Thanks for this, man. Oh, anytime, man. Thanks yeah. for being on the show. Great trip down Henry Lane, man. I do appreciate that. Yeah, uh, thank you. That was <laughs> yeah, we were, were going to do uh, cameos, alligator woman, but yeah, uh -oh. at, that la at the last minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had to do it, man. I mean, had to do it, man. You know, my kudos and happy thirtieth, man, to those guys too. Man. Yes, <laughs> happy thirtieth. Yeah, and, yeah. Cool. Hopefully, that tour will make it to a city yeah. near you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And thanks again, brother, man. Yeah. I got to go home, but... yeah, let me. Yeah, about that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, man, look, you you be safe out there. Listeners, y'all be safe out there in these streets, man. You know, stay cool. I know it's heated environment. Oh, yeah. It's, it's brutal here, too. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, so stay cool. Stay safe. You know, Ricky Wyatt, thanks for being on the show once again. No problem. Um, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, Footprints Cubase 4 on Instagram. All right. <laughs> I know, man, just Ricky Wyatt on Facebook. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> and of course, you can find me everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, you know, hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, if you're on Patreon, become a Patreon supporter. Uh, thanks for tuning in, especially um, actually those cameo episodes. Been getting a lot of been gaining some momentum okay so thanks to everybody out there for checking that out and some of the previous videos it's been a while but i've been back in rotation so tune in check us out again and until then create your day create your life peace, peace.